Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, tutorial uh, which explains how to build a simple computer. The computer we are going to cover is um, actually not doing anything useful, but it can show our it can show us that it works. And the computer consists of three components that's the CPU or uh, pro uh, processor that's the read-only memory uh, which holds a program that the CPU will read and perform and the clock which uh, supplies the CPU with heartbeat so the CPU is like a person it, it has a heartbeat and uh, it's going to think what uh, uh, it, it's going to read from the read-only memory the program and is going to analyze it and uh, execute all these instructions that it finds in the memory. So uh, everything starts uh, with the voltage and uh, we need it here each component here needs uh, food or voltage for functional for functioning and uh, we give we give them 3.7 volts that would be enough so we put our power supply unit which is connected to wall socket and it converts from 230 volts it makes uh, 3.7 volts and it goes here we have plus and ground we can we can check it with a multimeter Uh, no. This is the ground. We switched it on. And uh, this is plus. Yeah, three point three point eight volts. So it doesn't matter. Three point seven or three point eight. 0.8 difference is small so we have 3.7 volts we give it to these guys and uh, now what happens next when they get the voltage they get the food they start to function and uh, what is their functionality the cpu wakes up or oh, oh, sorry the cpu gets the voltage but but it doesn't get the heartbeat so it's waiting for the heartbeat and the read only memory got the voltage and uh, it's uh, just like a book you give it some page number and it will give uh, the content of this page and now the page number on the address pins, we will cover them later, is zero. That's why the read-only memory uh, puts on the data bus the content of this uh, page number zero. But we will cover this later. The read-only memory is not doing anything special, but the CPU is waiting for the heartbeat. The clock is the one that will supply the CPU with the heartbeat. So, the first of all, when they all get the, get the voltage, the first of them uh, what, uh, is uh, interesting for us is clock. It's going to generate the heartbeat for the CPU. And uh, it has uh, legs. If we look closer, how... What the clock looks like. Mm. And 
that. Get it done. So the clock looks like this. It has writings on it, but this is the wrong one, but the This is with different frequency, but um, the uh, container is the same. So it has legs, it has four legs, and uh, where do we head? Where do we get the heartbeat? This clock is giving us wind point y one point eight megahertz of frequency that is the heartbeat for the cpu and we can uh, generate different frequency with different clock and uh, depends on the cpu which will which it will uh, accept but the legs about the legs the first if we if we take a look at this clock it's going to come here it has a uh, uh, this uh, straight corner you see and that straight corner means the beginning of the counting that's the leg number one leg number two leg number three leg number four so the leg number five uh, number one is it is this it's not doing anything it's just for support you just solder it to the board and it's going to, to be more reliable but it doesn't do, do anything special. Uh, leg number one. Leg number two is uh, going to be ground. Uh, by the way, why I say ground? You see ground here in writing and plus. Why don't I say uh, plus and minus? Why do I say plus and ground? In order to explain that, I will take a sheet of paper and I will uh, draw a graph. Sorry. So we have zero. That's our ground. That's our voltage. That's our time. Time we have in seconds, for example voltage we have in volts that's 3.7 volts here one two three four one two three four five so we have 3.7 volts it's somewhere here and it's not going it's not changing it's all the time the same so it's we can draw it like this and you see we have no place for the minus here the minus means minus x minus one minus two minus three but we we don't use we don't have a place for for it in our in our project because we have plus and we have ground ground is the reference point we have zero volts at ground that means zero not minus from zero we start to count zero one two three and so on so we have 3.7 volts and uh, it's going to clock and uh, clock has legs first leg is uh, for nothing uh, the second leg is ground we're connecting it to ground the third leg starting from this straight angle one two three the third leg is our uh, is our signal what at this leg this clock is giving us our frequency this clock is giving its output its desire desirable output on this leg 
number three. And leg number four, the last one, we are connecting to plus to 3.7 volts. And that's it. When the clock gets the voltage, straight away it's going to generate the frequency. Frequency, that's the oscillating frequency. And that's our graph, volts, time, ground, zero. And that frequency will, uh, will be like this, that the signal will be like this. And that square wave signal with the frequency of 1.8 megahertz, megahertz about this frequency this uh, pulse pulsing is going to be present on this leg number three and this leg is connected with cpu uh, leg with the with the leg of the cpu number six which is named clock and that's that's uh, built for connecting with the clock that's that's designed to be connected with the clock to get frequency so uh, we give to the cpu the frequency 1.8 megahertz and we will check it we have the uh, scope how this scope it has USB USB connection and uh, it has probe this one we don't need no so uh, this one we don't need so we have a probe and uh, we're gonna we're going to check if we really have a frequency you see this the other side has some wires and uh, among them is the this wire that's connected from here from the output of the clock to the cpu number pin number six and uh, this this uh, probe needs to be connected to ground that's what i do we connect it to ground this is the ground and this connected to this one is ground and uh, another probe which goes goes to plus i will connect with the output of the clock pin number three it's here but i will connect it here it's it's uh, more convenient so now i will start the program of the scope is different one uh, it must be oh no it's correct one but but I think that I will need to disconnect this some um, else. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, that's the first one, not the second one. This, pro this uh, software is the correct one. Now, what do we have? Now you can see uh, the same uh, the same pattern like, like we draw here, like we have drawn here. And uh, it has frequency 1.8 megahertz. It have some has some amplitude. It has some voltage and zero voltage zero, with the frequency 1.8 megahertz. If we check the frequency, as you see, 1.8 uh, megahertz. And if we check the Voltage maximum it gives us four something volts. Well, it it, it lies. <laughs> so we have uh, we have a pulse. We have a heartbeat. You see this. And this one, this uh, wave goes to the CPU, to the pin number 6. If we check with the pin number 6 on the CPU, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We get the same frequency, because they are connected, this why, between each other. So, okay, now we get the frequency. The CPU has the heartbeat, the CPU has the voltage, the CPU has the heartbeat, and now the CPU is waking up, and when it is waking up, it's going to read the memory, the book, that's his book, that he's going to read, and do according to what he finds in the memory and as uh, in the usual book there are pages page numbers starting from one but in here in re this read-only memory we have book symbolic book uh, with page numbers starting from zero and how do how does the CPU tell to the read-only memory the page number that he wants to read in symbolic language? Actually, it is the it looks more like a, a cell. A cell. I will I will draw it here. Uh, what is inside of this chip? As you can imagine, there are memory cells. It's full of memory cells. This chip. Now draw them up. That you could see this. more clearly mm. so we have memory cells each one has address mm. starting from zero Uh, starting from zero, ending with four, that means five, five cells we have. And each cell contains something. If we take a look at this cell, now it has nothing. And we're going to write a program in the memory. It has uh, empty cells, which need to be filled, filled with uh, numbers. And uh, the numbers... We call them bytes. 
and I will explain right now we don't need this one thanks now let's take a look at the content of the memory the program that I have made it's uh, the program that's uh, designed to show that this CPU is working this program doesn't do anything useful but the only thing it does is that it shows that the computer <coughs> functions correctly so the content of the memory chip consists of five cells of five bytes of data or five numbers and the first number that we have we'll see take a look at these numbers so we have five numbers stage one uh, number three e you see why i say it is number it has zero x three e it is not number it is letter why do i call it number because it's really number you see we'll take a look at the numbering systems if i if i say some number let's take a calculator you see a calculator and you are familiar with that i think but if we change it for programmer mode you see at the top part we have this strange abbreviations and uh, this is this called numbering systems hexadecimal numbering system decimal numbering system this i don't know how to spell and uh, this is binary numbering system and which uh, which is our interest which is our point of interest is hexadecimal and binary numbering systems for example if i if i put here number one if I uh, take number one, you see, uh, number one in decimal system is the same like number one in hexadecimal. That's uh, in binary, we, we too have number one. But if I put, uh, if I add to this number one, one more, what I get? You know that I will get two, but... You see, I really get two in decimal system. I really get two in hexadecimal system. But I have zero one in binary system. If I add, oh, I, I'll, I'll better explain. Why do we have zero one in binary system? Because it's like, uh, you see, I will draw a, uh, uh, glass have glass of water or some jar and it uh, contains some amount of liquid for example it's 10 milliliters or uh, I don't know let it be a jar better uh, that's uh, that will be one liter two liters three liters or bucket four liters five liters and we have uh, uh, some more uh, six seven 
eight, nine. So we have a bucket uh, which uh, which can contain nine liters of water. What if we have uh, ten liters and we uh, we put it in here? We have we have ten liters. So it's going to it's going to fill up starting from one from zero. Then goes one, two, three. The water will rise and as it gets to more than nine it's going to spill. We have another bucket here. It's going to it's going here. It's and it's starting to uh, to rise in another bucket. And uh, but it's not uh, exact um, picture. It's just. Uh, similarity to the it's really it's really not uh, not the picture that it doesn't uh, display correctly it's not correct but um, what we have here I will be, what I wanted to say with this picture is uh, that uh, if we uh, have uh, some uh, uh, limit and uh, uh, it if we have some room that can uh, hold for example only nine units and if you try to pull to put in that uh, room 10 units it will not be able to hold this 10 it's going to share with the next order well if we have uh, for example if we have a, a place uh, one place single place for the number uh, maximum what we will have in decimal system the decimal system is we we are using in usual life and if we have a decimal system, the maximum that we will have in the single place, if we start increasing it, take a look at what happens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you see only one letter. You see only one digit. But then... You see two, you see already two digits. That's because uh, the maximum that can hold uh, one place is nine. And if you try to put 10 there inside, then it will share with the next order. So uh, the same is uh, acceptable for the binary system. If we have zero, it's okay. The binary system is able to hold zero uh, in one in a single place. If we start to add, okay, the binary system is able to hold one in a single place. But if you start to add once more, then the binary system is not able because single place in binary system can hold only two values either zero or one it cannot be it cannot hold two the decimal system is able to hold two it's able to hold nine but is not able to hold ten in binary system uh, the single place in binary system cannot hold uh, more than one 
it, it holds only zero or one when it grows higher then it's going to use the next order you see uh, the point here is in this that the binary system is growing much much faster than decimal but the hexadecimal system is growing well uh, way slower than decimal you see if we have uh, uh, number eight and uh, we adding to it one what we get nine yes we have nine eight plus one means nine but in hexadecimal we we do have nine but if we try to add one more then as you see the decimal system is not able to hold at the same place number 10 it's going to use two places one two but hexadecimal system is able to hold at the same place uh, starting from 1 ending to 15 that's why we have here letters a b c d e f they go after 9 so this in in uh, decimal system we have uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and so on but in hexadecimal system we have 0 1 10 3 4 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a b c d e f then goes 10 then goes uh, something that that looks like 10 but it's 16 in decimal system if we put number 10 in, in hexadecimal system that means 16 as you see we put hexadecimal 10 and that means 16 if we put hexadecimal f that means 15 so you see the point here that uh, the a, a, a ability to contain uh, how much one place can contain uh, in binary system it can contain a maximum one in decimal system it can contain maximum nine single place can contain maximum nine in uh, hexadecimal system the single place can contain maximum f which means 15 15 in decimal system so that's why we are having here 3e uh, so that's uh, 0x that means hexadecimal system that's just uh, uh, such a sign that's uh, just such a marker of the hexadecimal system so we have 3e if we want to know what it means in our language we use 3e we put it in a hexadecimal system and that means 62 in decimal system that's the real number 62 but it also means 3e in hexadecimal so we have five uh, numbers which are uh, which live here in memory or here we have five numbers that starts start from address zero that's the address of the first cell and that is It was 3e, a, b, d3. 3e. A, b. D3. And then goes 3 e a b d 
So um, how this dialog goes between the CPU and uh, memory? When the CPU gets the heartbeat, it starts to wake up and it's, it asks, asks memory. Hey memory, uh, show me the content of uh, the page number zero. Of address number zero. Then memory uh, says, okay, let's see number zero. Who lives at number zero? Yeah, leaves 3e CPU. We have 3e at number 0 at address 0. The CPU then says, Okay, thanks, memory. And then the CPU looks at the table, it has a meaning for each number, reference table. That means this CPU name is Z80. That's his short name. Z80. And we, we want instruction set. It's instruction set. And uh, so the CPU has something like this. It knows already if it gets 3E, it means some instruction. All what memory sends to the CPU means for the CPU instructions. And uh, these instructions 3E, the CPU knows that 3e code 3e that means loads load uh, into the register a byte that will follow and by the way what means byte byte is 8 bit i will explain Since, uh, let's take a look, let's take a look at the legs of the CPU, Z80, pinout, and uh, That's how the CPU look like. That's his legs. Okay. Yes. That's the CPU. Uh, the same chip. It has some writings on it. You see, that's his full name in the second row. And his legs, it has 40 legs. And we don't use so many. We don't use, we, we use, we are using some of them. But they can be grew. They can be they can be grouped in groups. For example, you see these uh, legs are marked. Uh, some of them like a prefix with a prefix. That a means address. So starting from a zero and a ending with uh, a fifteen. And that means uh, altogether 16. 16 legs form an address. We call this uh, group address bus. 
So uh, how is this address bus is able to hold address? Uh, since our binary system allows us to hold either 0 or 1 on a single place, that's very convenient to use this binary system, these places, as legs on the CPU. For example, you see, uh, the first place contains 0. So if we... Uh, take a look at the first leg that that contains address. Uh, uh, the first leg of address bus. Uh, uh, say we will not put voltage here. We are going to give it ground. Ground voltage or zero voltage. And that would mean zero. And in case if we apply voltage to it, for example, above 2 volts, that would mean 1. So with zeros and 1s, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, put number on this uh, address bus, just like it is here. We have uh, on the calculator, we have uh, place number 0, place number 1, place number 2, place number 3, and so on. And all together, for example, there are fi fi uh, 16. And we have from uh, A0 to A15, we have all together 16 legs. And if we uh, put, if we encode them the same way like here, for example, a0 would be 0, A1 would be 1, A2 would be 1, A3 would be 1, A4 would be 1, A5 would be 1, A6 would be 0, A7 would be 0, and all the rest are 0. And that would mean that on address bus we have uh, address 3E or 62 or uh, this one. And uh, uh, these legs of the CPU are connected directly to the uh, address legs of the memory. The memory chip has the same legs like this. But one moment. The memory chip is not able to address... In, our memory chip is not able to uh, address... It it it, it uh, uh, the memory chip has address bus starting from A zero and ending with not A fifteen but A fourteen. So the maximum that it, it can address is fifteen fifteen uh, bits. Uh, this single place named bit just because it can be one or zero. That's bit. That's bit of information. That's uh, unit of information, the minimal. And if we have 8 of them, that means byte. That's because, uh, why 8? Because uh, it just, uh, the way it is, <laughs> uh, we have a data bus, we have address bus here, and we have data bus. Like you see, for each address that the CPU puts here, starting from 0, and uh, the memory chip will reply to it. At the zero, we have 3E. And the 3E, this 3E goes to the data bus. The data bus consists of D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7. The, max, uh, the data bus uh, of our uh, CPU uh, consists of eight legs. That means eight uh, places of the binary system it can hold uh, that means maximum uh, each leg can be either one or zero or if we have eight legs that means eight 
places to put one or zero and if we really uh, put all places to zero if we have no more room uh, to increase the database the maximum number that we have is 255 in decimal system but in hexadecimal system that means ff so this is the the maximum places that we can have are two in hexadecimal system but in binary system eight eight places and this this is the same number ff this is maximum that we can hold on eight legs ff or this one in binary system all ones or 255 in decimal system. This is the same number in different systems. Now, we have this data bus connected with a memory data bus. Address bus of the CPU connected with memory address bus. So they are connected and data bus is connected with the output of this computer. Uh, there, uh, as we said before, the CPU going to use address bus. It will ask memory who lives at address 0. The memory answers at address 0 lives 3E. And the CPU gets to know that 3E means, according to the instruction set, for the CPU, address 3E means load, load into the register A a byte of data that will follow in the next, with the next address. So address 0 contains 3E and for the CPU that means to put into the register A byte that will follow in the next address. What is register? Register is uh, the same memory in the CPU like it is in the read-only memory. All this, uh, like you see all these papers represent cells, memory cells, and CPU has also these memory cells, but they don't have numbers. They are not numbered like 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, they don't have addresses, but they have names in the CPU, since they are few, they are just a uh, few of them, of these cells. And uh, uh, that one of them is A. Uh, this A uh, is the name of memory cell of the CPU. So uh, the instruction 3E means for the CPU, put the next uh, byte to the register A. To the place of memory A. So the CPU is going to is wants to know what is the next byte with the next address that it's it's supposed to put to the register A. And uh, the next thing the CPU does, if it uh, if it had address zero all of these uh, A legs contained zero voltage and now the CPU is going to increase this uh, address and it's putting one here and in binary system that's one and all the rest are zeros that means one in decimal system that means one in the hexadecimal system and that means one for the memory that uh, uh, means for the memory that the CPU uh, wants to know who lives at address one. So the memory replies at address one lives AB and the CPU already knows that uh, AB is not instruction. It is the second part of instruction 3E which which means put to the register A byte that will follow 
and this byte is AB with the next address. So the CPU has got two parts of one instruction, uh, the instruction itself and its data. And now it is able to execute this instruction. And what it does, it puts to the register A, to the memory with the name A, the byte AB. So, uh, by the time that the CPU is uh, going to increase once more address bus, it already has AB at his memory named A. So, it increases instruction, it uh, now, uh, uh, it, it, sorry, it increases, now CPU increases address, it's going to put one to the uh, to this leg a1 and it's going to put zero to this leg and that would be zero one and that means two in the decimal system i'll show you if we had zero now we have zero one if we have zero one and all the rest are zeros that means 2. And uh, the memory chip will reply because the CPU wants to know who lives at address 2. Memory says, memory chip will say, at address 2 lives D3. So the CPU is going to, it wants to know what is D3. And D3 means, that's D3. That means, Uh, uh, send to the port uh, with the number that will follow with the next with the next uh, instruction. Send to the port that will follow at the next address the value of a. Uh, in practice, that means that put uh, this instructions means for the CPU. Put the value of register A, as you remember it is AB, to the data bus, to the uh, these uh, legs that start with D, eight of them, that's his data bus. He didn't use use it uh, until now, but now the instruction reads put uh, content of uh, register A, that means A B, to the data bus to here. That means the CPU is going to put A B. A B looks like this. In the, in the binary representation, what this number is going to sit on the legs of the data bus, on these ones, from D, D0 to D7. But what about the second part of instruction? We actually don't need this. As you see, D3 instruction that leaves at address number 2 that was d3 that said uh, sent to the port uh, uh, the address of port will follow the value of a in practice that means sent to the data bus the value of A, that was AB, and uh, put to the address bus the number that will follow with the next instruction. And the CPU increases, increases once more data bus in order to get the number that it's going to put on the date on the address bus. Oh, sorry, the, 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 the CPU is going to uh, increase address bus in order to get 
from memory uh, the second part of instruction uh, what to put to the address bus so it has 56 with the next address the memory replied to the CPU at address number 3 leaves 56 so by now the CPU has got uh, the second instruction with its, with its uh, second part that means uh, for the CPU that means uh, start using address bus and data bus put to the uh, data bus number AB from the register A and put to the address bus number 56 that we actually don't need just for example 56 <clears throat> so now the CPU uh, sees that it has to use itself address bus and data bus uh, by now it used only address bus to supply addresses to read-only memory and read-only memory used data bus to reply to the CPU data buses and address buses are connected between the between these chips and data bus comes to here and now it's time to look at the 3d model uh, 3d model of the of our computer that looks like this and that's uh, simplified a little bit we don't have all the legs on the, on the cpu we have only these legs that we are using so we have address bus addresses we are using starting from a0 to a14 and connected to read-only memory address bus and we have data bus starting from d0 uh, ending with these uh, d7 uh, that's data bus and it's connected directly to the with wires with solder it's connected to uh, the data bus of the read-only memory and also the read-only memory has such pin like OE that means output enable when we are using this pin we we uh, allow uh, the memory chip to use data bus but if we disable if we enable this pin that memory chip is able to use data bus for example to reply to the cpu with uh, all this instruction that we saw but if we disable this pin the memory chip is not able to speak nothing here why should we need this to disable because uh, the cpu is going to use uh, as next instruction uh, 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 commanded the CPU is going to use data bus to put content of the register A to the data bus and at the same place at the same time it's going to use address bus to put to the address bus number 56 like we saw so uh, the CPU is going to um, uh, use this uh, data bus itself and that's why it puts uh, this uh, memory pin to disabled state it it uh, uh, it commands to the memory to it disables the memory from uh, saying something to avoid confl conflict between these chips because the CPU is going to use this data bus itself so uh, as you can see this slash this slash means that uh, this uh, pin is this chip is enabled when it's high and it is disabled when it's oh sorry this chip is enabled when it's low and disabled within when it's high what means high or low high is one low is zero it can be binary logic like binary uh, numbering system says it can be one or zero so high is one uh, low is zero and the cpu disables this memory chip in order to 
to fulfill, to execute these instructions, this instruction starting from D3, ending with 56. It disables the memory chip and it's uh, indicating that it's outputting something. And in order to do that, it will uh, draw low or uh, put uh, zero voltage or put zero on the pins WR and IORQ. That means uh, write and uh, input output request. And it will, will draw, draw them low and that would mean that it enables them that it the CPU says that I am now outputting something. That's why it draws them low and as they are connected with diodes, these diodes are here in order to make sure that this voltage doesn't flow in opposite direction. It goes just one way and at the same time these diodes sum, sum up this voltage. So if it's zero here and that's connected with the next chip that we as you see, we have clock here, CPU, read-only memory, and this one we didn't have. We have clock, uh, CPU, read-only memory, and this one we are going to have now. We are going to connect uh, one more chip here. Going to connect its... <coughs> these two boards and on this board we don't have anything but just one resistor I'll explain later why and this chip this is flip-flop we, we push reset button and we get this number here that's a B how do we get this uh, the CPU says I'm outputting something. That's why it draws these pins low. That's why we have low level here and at CP. Usually we have high voltage here. That's one. But now we have zero. And if we have zero here, that means for the for him, that means like we are pushing the we are pressing the button on the camera capture button on a photo camera and uh, as uh, this data bus as you see uh, this connected between these chips but also it is connected with these input chips with these input pins that means that uh, uh, the last uh, command d3 meant for the CPU to put 56 here and to put a b content of the register a here and since this connected this is connected also to the input of the flip-flop as soon as the flip-flop gets low voltage here that means the pushing of the uh, photo uh, of button uh, capture button of the photo camera and it captures it captures uh, this input a b to the output and it's going to hold this a b on the output until someone presses once again this or sends zero here once again so uh, the flip-flop is like a photo camera it captures input to the output so we have captured here byte a b if you, you don't remember what means a b how how a b looks like that's one one zero one zero one zero one that's one one zero one zero one zero one because we have seven here zero here it's different opposite direction that's why we read from end to 
from uh, plus to first. <coughs> so we have uh, AB sitting at the light lamps, at the light emitting diodes. And uh, then when the CPU did all this, when it uh, executed this command number two, this was the instruction number one with its data, instruction number two with its data, and uh, it goes uh, ahead. The CPU is going to increase once more. It releases the read-only memory. It enables it. It uh, it uh, it uh, disables the its output. It's it's not no more saying that I'm outputting something. We have high voltage on the flip flop capture pin. Once again, a flip flop. And for flip flop, that means the released, uh, the released uh, capture button, and it holds till uh, the output of the uh, that means AB, and the CPU goes ahead and the, it increases the address bus once more. The last uh, address that we had was three, and now it's four, and the four. Uh, uh, gives to the read-only memory and read-only memory replies at address 4 leaves 76 the CPU then looks who is 76 and it finds like 76 is uh, 76 is halt it means Suspend CPU operation until interrupt or reset occurs. That means stop, stop, don't do anything else. And this is the last uh, byte that we have on the data bus and on the input of the flip flop. Since they're connected, as we saw. But we still have AB here. Since uh, the capture button, uh, the CPU is not using anymore. So we captured the output of the computer here. We have A, B, and we are happy. <laughs> now uh, the computer works. Now we are going to see some details uh, of this computer. For example, you saw that I pressed uh, the reset button. For example, if I apply power to the CPU now, you see on the output something different. It's, the, it's uh, something that uh, we didn't expect. Why? Because the CPU is not able to function correctly when uh, the voltage jumps. When I connected this jack, the voltage jumped. And the CPU is like... Uh, it, it, it's gone mad. It, it doesn't understand what it does. It's not functioning correctly now. In order to uh, get it to sense, uh, I'm going to press the power, uh, sorry, the reset button. I press the reset button, I release it, and uh, we have uh, this AB that we're supposed to have when C CPU correctly fulfills these five bytes of, of uh, instructions that it finds on the read-only memory one by one, five addresses, and it fulfills, it execu executes them, and we have uh, uh, very, we have uh, like we're supposed to, we have this AB sitting here, the output of this computer. So the reset button is what we need. Also, we need few more components, like we saw. We saw the diodes. These diodes. Uh, we saw why we need them to avoid to avoid the electricity flowing in back direction. And also, we are summing the signal together. If we don't have the CPU outputting something, 
we have a positive voltage here we have plus and we have a plus here too and we have here a plus we have one here we have one everywhere but if we have only a half of zero then we still have one here but only when we have two zeros here since we have two pins at the cpu why we have two pins uh, why the cpu is uh, saying when it's saying i'm outputting something why does it use two pins it's a different story but we need to have uh, both of them uh, zeroed when they're zeroed they means that means they are active since we have these slashes uh, this uh, when it's active uh, when it's active we have zeros here we have zero here and we have zero until here that's the pressing of the capture button what what are these uh, why do we have uh, this cylinder here and we see this cylinder here and this cylinder here well this one is just for protection because uh, we have light emitting diodes on the output of the flip-flop we have flip-flop we have output light emitting diodes eight eight of them they are very sensitive they don't like uh, a lot of current and they want uh, a resistor that will uh, limit amount of current that flows through them and this resistor i put here that's one kilo ohm for protecting these diodes from burning out as you see have resistor here it's connected with output of diodes and uh, on other side it's connected to ground to ground and uh, so they are protected with the resistor and we have two more resistors one is here one is here uh, this one pulls low what is pull low and we, this one pulls high what is what does it mean uh, draw if we have uh, somebody chip a chip b and they are connected they are connected with wire and this wire can be either one or zero it can have uh, uh, more than two volts on it for example that means one that means binary one like in binary logic in binary numbering system and if we have less than two volts that means zero but of, what if we have uh, uh, what if we don't connect it with uh, plus or with ground what is it is not connected what voltage do we have well usually we don't have voltage that means zero but uh, often this uh, chip is not stable it can uh, put here some voltage that we don't expect if we uh, do not define this uh, uh, output this leg then it can have different voltages and to make sure that it is zero for example we connect it to zero that's uh, that's making sure if we want to make sure that it's connected that it's one all the time we connect it with plus with plus for example we have some pins that need to be either zero on or one but we have some pins on the cpu some legs uh, for example weight non-maskable interrupt 
and uh, busy request something and we need to disable all of them and that's why since they have slashes that means they are enabled when they are zero and we don't want them to be zero never and we connect them with high voltage with the plus and that means for us that they are disabled all the time that's uh that's strong uh, force disabling but you see that some pins may need sometimes to be zero sometimes to be one and for example when it's uh, for example this pin when sometimes it's going to be one if the chip if this uh, chip is outputting one here then we have a short circuit we are not allowed to connect plus with ground and uh, in order to avoid that we connect resistor here we connect resistor and after the, uh, this resistor goes ground and this resistor prevents the short, short circuit and if we and if the one is absent here then we have ground here from here over resistor so this in uh, a resistor uh, protects this wire from short circuit when we have one and when we don't have one it ensures that we have zero from here and uh, the same way goes for the plus if we put uh, positive here then we always have positive here until we put ground here if we pull ground put ground here then we don't have uh, this resistor save this resistor protects from the short circuit and we have ground everywhere here on this side and we have uh, for example this this is this resistor it gives it's connected to the uh, positive voltage here and uh, that ensures that we all the time have positive voltage here until we press power button we'll press this button the reset button if we press the reset button this one then this part and this part get connected and since this is uh, connected to ground we have ground here and we are protected with this resistor from uh, positive side resistor eats some current and we have ground here when we press uh, the button when we re release the button we break the link we have ground here and we have positive here from here so that's that's the because this reset pin is connected here and it's re resetted since it has a slash that means that's active when it's zero and we have zero when we press power button and when we release power button uh, we release the button reset button then we have one uh, and that logic comes here this resistor protects us from Uh, sorry this resistor ensures that if we have two zeros here from the cpu we have we have definitely zero here and these diodes don't bother don't uh, prevent us from having zero here because we make sure that we have zero here if we have uh, both of them zeroed so for making sure we have two resistors and we can see them here one of them is here uh, and one of them is here 
means one of them is here and another one is here and also we have two diets one is here one is there and that's it that's all we have and what I can uh, what I can uh, see more I can tell you more that all these uh, things all these components are located at the folder the uh, names located at the folder stage number one which you will find in the description to this tutorial and uh, there will be needed components subfolder where you will find the CPU and you will find uh, the CPU is uh, by the way it can accept different frequencies but I uh, uh, at the stage number one that we covered this frequency uh, can be acceptable any frequency from uh, 50 gear 50 Hertz to for example 10 megahertz but you want to make sure that uh, Z80 make that includes many different makes and you can have a uh, uh, exactly this that I put here that I have put here with these markings you can find in eBay but also you can find uh, different ones which which work differently it doesn't matter for the stage one uh, on different frequency I mean that would work the read-only memory we have uh, you can find them in uh, yeah, I wouldn't advise from eBay to buy them, but in uh, you can find them in electronic stores. And I will show how to search. Well, you can actually buy them from eBay too, but I'm using, for example, Mauser. And you can put here And search and you get this one and that costs uh, almost nine euros. Well, that's for example. You can find all of them, com all of these components, on eBay or uh, whatever. Uh, the CPU I would advise uh, to buy from the electronic store, not from eBay, because they uh, uh, often uh, sell defected uh, components there. And the diets. I just uh, tried these ones <laughs> of this make and they work. I don't know, maybe some better diets you can find. This uh, board, two pieces would be nice. This piece here and this is has been cut in two, in half. And that has holes. These holes are metal plated and uh, that's uh, they are they go through these like uh, little metal tubes 
you can find them all by names by their names here pcb and uh, leds light emitting diodes and resistors uh, that's um, and the clock you can find the smaller one doesn't need much the clock you will find by the frequency one eight four three two it can show how to find one Eight forty-two M. It's mega, mega, mega And we will find, we will look at the pictures. You see this a lot of them, and we'll choose the for example AliExpress or eBay. This one uh, even bigger <laughs> than our oh, that's pretty expensive, but this is correct one uh, ah three pieces sorry you'll get three pieces for this price so that's the way we are looking we are searching and you will get the computer done and uh, you will understand how it works so in the next section we are going to cover how to get something useful from this program that we are going to put here and we're going to replace this uh, stupid <laughs> photo camera chip <laughs> that only can only can capture input to output we're going to exchange it for something smarter this one is good and we're going to uh, put something uh, better than just uh, some better program than just uh, this one of five bytes which which is able to output a b here so that's it that's uh, that's it for now and we covered all this uh, uh, topic how to make a computer did i miss something i'll take a look briefly about numbering system bytes high low pull down yes that's it okay all the best to you thanks for watching